Donald Trump Jr. back on the stand today as the defense starts its arguments in the $250 million civil fraud trial against his father and the family business. The former president's son testified about the, quote, incredible things the Trump organization has accomplished over the years. And he praised his father as a visionary for pushing boundaries. This is the second time on the stand for the former president's son, who was already called by prosecutors. Vaughn Hilliard is in New York City for us now, keeping an eye on all of the developments today. So, Vaughn, uh, this is Don Jr.'s second time testifying, as we said. What did we hear from his testimony today for the defense versus what we heard when he was questioned by prosecutors? Right, Aaron. This is the key part here, is that it was his own defense lawyer asking him the question here. This is the second half of this trial that began today. Don Jr. was the first witness called to the stand by the defense lawyers. And unlike when the prosecution was asking Don Jr. questions, and the judge, Ingeron, would jump in, and uh, like he did with uh, former President Trump last Monday, urging the defendants to answer the specific questions of the New York Attorney General prosecutor. This go around, uh, the defendant, Don Jr., was allowed to further elaborate and build out his own narrative over the course of more than four hours on the witness stand, specifically around the Trump Organization and its history. Don Jr., dating back to the creation of the company by Fred Trump, down to his father, uh, long to the point where he became an executive with the company in the early 2000s, he laid out the different Trump properties from the likes of Chicago to to Hawaii, to Las Vegas, to Scotland, to here in New York, and making the case as to why the Trump Organization is of even greater value than uh, the financial records that he signed his name to, and that the judge in this case has already ruled uh, amounted to financial fraud, uh, is greater than. Uh, this is a complicated case that Don Jr. is uh, trying to move past here as he elaborates as to the extent to which, in fact, the Trump Organization uh, is not given its due credit for the extent to which it actually is valued. You know, I, would, I do want to ask you, Vaughn, from what you've been seeing, what you've been reporting, how does the younger Trump here fit into the larger strategy of what the defense is trying to accomplish? Right. It's important to remember that this is not just the Trump organization that is a defendant here. Don Jr. and Eric, not Ivanka, but Don Jr. and Eric are defendants, as well as the former chief financial uh, officer, uh, Alan Weisselberg, uh, as well as Jeffrey McConney, the, the comptroller for the company. And Don Jr. has uh, repeatedly suggested that he relied on the word of the accountants of the company, those who were in charge of the actual finances. Well, that would responsibility would fall in the the likes of Alan Weisselberg and Jeffrey McConney, two of the other defendants here. And this is where this case gets uh, tricky. Don Jr. did, in fact, sign these financial records. At the same time, he said that he relied on the words and the minutia to be understood and put together by the finance team here. And so this is where the judge has already ruled on the financial fraud uh, claims and one claim, but there are six other claims that he is now mulling over on how to rule. And Don Jr. is hoping that uh, he, the penalty incurred by him and his family uh, are not any uh, uh, additional to what he's already been ruled against on. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.